Hi everybody, today I thought I'd share with you a little project on designing and building an accurate low current reference source which I required to cover some of the microamp ranges and what we'll do first of all have a look at some of the criteria that I considered uh, with designing this project. Now here we see the uh, main features or criteria I considered for this project. I wanted it to give me uh, four current ranges in the microamp range from 100 microamp to 400 microamp. I wanted the accuracy to be plus or minus 0.5 percent or better and I wanted the long-term stability of this uh, device to uh, with a temperature coefficient of plus or minus 25 parts per million degree centigrade and importantly I wanted it to be able to build this without the need for calibration so we've got no calibration requirements for this project. Um, the other thing I considered is that uh, because I'm going to power this from a battery I wanted it to handle a wide uh, battery voltage range without any deterioration in the accuracy of the output current. And last of all I didn't want to use an on off switch in other words when the unit is not connected uh, to use these uh, reference currents then by default it's already switched off. So these are the main points I considered for this little project today. Now today in our project we're going to use something called a current mirror and therefore I thought it might be just a good idea to very quickly explain the basic principles behind a current mirror. Effectively what a current mirror does it simply copies or mirrors which whatever current we put in one side is mirrored to give exactly the same current on the other side. And in this particular little uh, representation of a basic current mirror you can see it's made up of two bipolar transistors. These are two NPN transistors. These transistors are identical in every way. They're uh, manufactured on the same substrate in the integrated circuit so uh, they're equally affected by temperature in exactly the same way. So if we were to supply the input to our current mirror with a reference current. So we feed a reference current down the collector of this uh, circuit and let's say we feed in there one microamps then a small amount of that current will branch off here and feed the base of that transistor to bias the transistor on and you'll notice there that that configuration where we simply connect the base of the transistor directly to the collector effectively connects that transistor as a diode so it's acting like a diode but the important thing here is that the current flowing down there to the base when it gets to that point because we've got both the base of these two transistors joined together that current will split. So you'll get an equal amount of current flowing to this transistor base as you will to that transistor base because both transistors are identical. So if this transistor starts to conduct and feeds through the reference current, in our case we have uh, 100 uh, microamps, then the second transistor here also conducts to the same degree and the current then flowing through that transistor will be equal to whatever the current is flowing through this transistor and therefore we'll have 100 microamps also flowing through this transistor. And you'll notice that both those currents are joined together here at the emitters and come out on a common pin and therefore the output current at the common there will be equal to the sum of the two and we'll get exactly 200 microamps coming out of this circuit. So this is a, a very basic uh, principle of the type of current mirror we'll be using in our project today. Now well, here we see the schematic for our project today. I'll be using the Texas Instrument REF200 IC which is a dual current source IC. It's got two independent 100 microamp current sources inside that uh, chip. And it also includes a current mirror which is quite useful for our project today. Uh, so just looking at the IC itself first of all, 
you can see that we, by the way we wire this particular chip up, we have a number of combinations. If we were to just use one of the current source um, in the ICs, let's say just use one 100 microamp current source, that's what we get out. If we were to put two of them in parallel, we'd get 200 microamps out. If we were to put one of the 100 microamp uh, current sources into the uh, current mirror and take the common out, we'd get 200 coming out, add it to 100, we've got 300. And then if we were to parallel the two 100 microamps together and feed that also into the current mirror, we get a further 200, parallel the two together in the common output, and we get 400 microamps coming out. So, however we configure this particular IC, we can get anything from 100, 200, or 300, or 400 microamps coming out of this as a current source. Now, if we look at the schematic here, you'll see that I've got the uh, both of the 100 microamp current sources and also the uh, current mirror output there connected to the plus 9 volt battery. So in that sense they're all taking the same input from the same supply source. Um, and what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the operation of the switches as we select the different ranges. At the moment you'll see I've got the switches set for 100 microamp output and you'll see here that switches A, B and C at the moment uh, the 100 microamp source on this side is going through switch A to that point there, it's going nowhere so that's open but if you follow it all the way down you can see that's going straight onto the output now terminal and we're getting on our output terminals then at 100 microamps source. If we were to uh, change the switch A position and switch that up to the 200 position You'll see what happens now is that we're, even, we're leaving the other two switches where they are, but now what we've done is we've paralleled both of these 100 microamp current sources here together. So you'll see pins 1 and 2 are joined together, and 8 and 7 at the top are joined together going to the battery. So in this case we've got the output from those in parallel going down here through switch C to the output. So we've got 200 uh, microamps coming out. If we now want to select uh, 300 microamps, we change the position of switch A now back down again. We change the switch B position to the up position. And we change switch C position also to the up position. So if we now have a look at what's happening here, we can see that the first 100 microamp current source in the IC is going down here and straight to the output but this time you'll see that the output the other output is coming from pin 3 of the IC which is the common from the current mirror and that's been added to the 100 microamps coming out but if you have a look at the current mirror you'll see that you've got the second 100 microamp current source going in the input of that current mirror so you've got the mirror now mirror in that 100 microamps and you get the combination of the two coming out here on the common pin, pin 3, so you've got 200 microamps coming out on pin 3, that's now added to the 100 microamps and therefore what's coming out at C and to the output terminal is 300 microamps. If we now select the uh, 400 microamp position we change switch A and simply switch that up And what we've done this time is you can see now we've paralleled again the two 100 current sources in the IC together. So they're now in parallel once more. And uh, this time you'll see they're going also to the input of the current mirror. So the current mirror is going to mirror that 200 uh, microamps. So what you'll get out of the common pin here is the addition of the two. So you'll get 400 uh, microamps coming out and that's therefore what's coming out through switch C to the output terminal and we're getting 400 microamps out. So that's how we're switching our uh, current sources on the output of this little uh, project today. Now you'll notice that uh, we don't need an on-off switch because uh, as long as the terminals on the output are not connected to anything the battery supply is open circuit so it's, it's only actually giving any uh, power when you have 
the current source of the output connected to whatever you're using it for. So that's our little uh, circuit today. Uh, I'm going to implement the uh, switches there A, B and C by using a rotary switch and I'm going to use a uh, three pole four way rotor switch to achieve this switching arrangement and I'll show you how I do that shortly. Now just one other point, I mentioned at the start that uh, we wanted it to work over a wide range of uh, battery voltages and in fact this particular IC it's capable of operating from 2.5 volts all the way up to 40 volts input uh, without any deterioration on the accuracy of the output current so if we're using a 9 volt battery then you can see here clearly that if the voltage were to go down uh, as long as it's above 2.5 volts the accuracy of the output current should be maintained. Here we see the uh, wiring arrangement for the project today it's quite simple we don't need to start producing a complicated printed circuit board so all the wiring is hardwired uh, most of it is actually on the rotary switch so you can see here I've got the rotary switch there shown with the terminals. The rotary switch is the uh, three pole four way so the three poles are A, B and C and the switch contacts uh, relating to A is 1, 2, 3, 4 relating to B is 5, 6, 7, 8 and relating to C is 9, 10, 11 and 12 the uh, small IC is simply mounted on a, a little uh, adapter board which converts the SMD component to a DIL configuration and I've marked the pin numbers there 1 to 8 which also relate directly to the pin numbers on the IC. So basically we just do a hard wiring on this uh, arrangement here. The uh, positive end of the 9 volt battery simply goes to pin 8 here on the IC and the uh, negative side of the battery goes to a uh, black negative 4mm socket on the box and the red uh, 4mm socket goes on to contact C on the rotary switch so those two terminals there is our source output. Here we have all the components for the project today uh, there we have the IC, the RAF200 there's the small little uh, converter PCB which we'll solder that chip on and then it's easier access then from the uh, DIL connection on either side. There we have the two 4mm banana sockets, standard 9 volt battery, the uh, three pole four way rotary switch and also the uh, point and up for the switch as well. Uh, battery connection there. The project box you can see here is uh, eight uh, centimeters by five centimeters and the depth of it is 3.5 centimeters little project box which you can get uh, quite readily these days on eBay and the other thing I produced is a, a front panel for this uh, project it's on uh, glossy uh, sticky paper well it's peel off sticky at the back so we can just print that on your normal uh, inkjet printer and then uh, peel the backing off and it will stick on top of the uh, project box. I've also indicated the little crosses there for the uh, holes so you can use that as a template to mark through the holes on the project box. Here we see now the uh, rotary switch which I've uh, got all the wiring done I've just put all the wire links on there and then basically what we do is we mount the, uh, the IC on the little uh, adapter board there and then that's just uh, connected by short wires to the uh, rotary switch to the relevant points uh, there you can just see there's a little wire there which will go connection for the positive of the battery and the orange uh, lead coming out here is what will go to the red uh, banana socket on the uh, front panel so that's all now wide up and complete quite easy to do really and uh, that will just slot in then or screw into the uh, the front panel. So I think the next thing we'll do now is we'll uh, have a look at the putting the front panel together. Right here we now see we've got the uh, front uh, plate and the front panel stick on and what I'm going to do first of all is simply just position that over the front plate and then I'm going to use the front panel stick on as a template to mark the uh, the drill holes for the banana sockets and the switch 
and then drill them out. Stick the uh, sticker on there onto the front plate and then just cut out the holes uh, to give us access for the, uh, the sockets and the uh, switch. So let's do that and come back and have a look at that. I've now uh, drilled the holes, I've stuck the front uh, panel on top there, the stick on, and then I've just cut out the uh, access holes now for the two uh, four millimeter sockets and the uh, rotary switch there. So the next thing to do is simply let's just uh, fix the sockets and the switch in place. Here we now have the uh, sockets mounted on the front panel, also the rotary switch. I haven't tightened up the nut fully yet on the rotary switch until I, I cut the spindle down to the right height for the pointer knob and then make sure the position for the pointer knob is correct before I finally tighten up the nut. Uh, and just be careful when you tighten up the nut not to tear the fascia on the front panel there. So that's the uh, the front panel assembled. We'll uh, get the spindle trimmed down and the pointer knob on and then we'll uh, wire up the uh, the sockets on the back. Well I've got the uh, rotary switch now fixed in place. The spindle is cut down for the uh, pointer knob. So I think the next thing we'll do now is we'll uh, position the pointer knob and then I'll just uh, screw that there and test it. Here we have uh, everything now wired up on the front panel there including the battery connector. Uh, so the next thing to do now is uh, mount it onto the uh, box. But before I do that let me just show you the arrangement for the, uh, the battery. Now there we see the position of the 9 volt battery in the project box and what I'm going to do, I've cut a piece of uh, cardboard, stiff cardboard, because I want to make sure that the metal casing of the battery doesn't uh, uh, touch across to the uh, rotary switch. So basically all I'm going to do is put uh, this bit of card that I've cut there, which is just giving some isolation between the, the battery and the uh, rotary switch. So let's assemble the whole unit now, plug the battery in and uh, we'll come back and test it. Right, so uh, I'll now test the uh, the unit on my Keithley 614 electrometer. Uh, it's set at the moment on the uh, 2000 microamp range so uh, let's uh, connect the, uh, the meter up. At the moment the little box is set to 100 so uh, And there we go. So uh, on the set to 100 it's giving us 100 uh, microamps out. I'll switch to 200. It's giving us 200, 300 and switch to 400. That seems to be working quite well. Let me just uh, switch back to 100 and I'll just go down a range and see if we can get a decimal place. So it's showing us there 100.4 microamps. So uh, certainly within its uh, tolerance. Well, I've got the unit out. I thought I'd just test this uh, new little test meter that I purchased recently. This is the Unity UT139C. Quite a nice little meter actually. Uh, this one cost me, I think it was £28. So it's relatively cheap. It's a 6,000 count meter and it does have a microamp range. So let's just see how accurate it is. Well I've got the uh, Unity meter hooked up to the uh, reference source here and on the 100 microamps it's reading 100.4 which is very good. I'll go to 200, 200.3, 300 microamps, 300.1 and 400 microamps, 400.6. I mean for a, a, a cheap meter I think that is very good. It's a nice little meter this. Uh, uh, it may be worth doing a little uh, review on this later as another video. Well I hope you found this little project on this low current reference source of interest. Uh, what I will do is I'll put you a couple of links down below where you can download the schematic and the wiring diagram for this uh, together with the artwork for the front panel. Uh, if you found it of interest, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you all again soon next time. Bye for now.